Well, I'm joined now in the studio by Senate spokesman Yemi Adarumodu. And uh, from our Lagos studio is uh, Sheo Nibinde, who is the CEO and co-founder of Budget uh, Civic Group, committed to government financial transparency. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Well, uh, let's start off with uh, Senator Adarumodu. Quite uh, the Senate has been in the news uh, lately, and many Nigerians are incensed, just as some, and looking for clarity. First, make sense of what exactly this is about for budget. Uh, just recently, budget wrote uh, that they are monitoring the ongoing situation regarding the, 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 the padding. So let's start off by asking you clearly, is this a case of padding, as uh, budget had uh, uh, tweeted just uh, some hours ago? Is that for me? Yes. Oh, good evening. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that uh, question. Yes, one, clearly we can now see that there's not like budget padding. Because, like the saying goes, he who asserts was proof. And then when you cannot prove, when you cannot prove, then it amounts to a failed attempt. It would waken the public with falsehood, alarming statements, no truth at all. Because for the past two days, the Senate has been so inundated with all this flimsy news and stories flying around. A consequence of an interview that one of us granted BBC Ausa that budget was padded, that 25 trillion naira budget was approved by the Senate or the reps, National Assembly for that matter, and that the presidency is now operating on 28 trillion naira budget, very far from the truth. And by the time we have not even called our colleague to question over it, he had started prevaricating. He had started shifting. He has initially started that he was a megaphone of the Northern Senators Forum. When Northern Senators started dissociating themselves from that kind of spurious allegation, he now started saying he was only brief for himself. He started changing the semantics. He started changing the lexicographies. He started shifting <coughs> grants. He now told us that, yes, he's ready to face the music. The music has not been sung when he came to the floor of the Senate today, when he was recounted to. That actually he did not say that, that there was even no where he mentioned budget party. But I don't even know the, uh, the definition of party, if that is not party. If 25 trillion naira actually was approved, and 20 trillion naira is what they are operating on. And there was nothing like that. Because after accusing him, after asking questions from him, it was known and it was noted, and everybody in Nigeria knows that one, that when the budget was submitted by the executive to the National Assembly late last year, it was 27 trillion 500 million that was submitted. And immediately, the National Assembly went into action through committees and so on and so forth, including that of Re House of Representatives. So we had joint sessions because of the timing. So, and then, during that period, many of the MDAs came because they were supposed to operate through every budget, which would have streamlined them, then cut them to size in allocating the resources that were supposed to go, especially for capital projects. Then why would they came? So we saw reason with many of them, especially the Minister of Works, Health Care, and the Food Security, that, and Judiciary. Then we found out that some things must be done about their budget, budgetary allocation. That was why the National Assembly deemed it fit that an additional one trillion. 200 billion, era, 200 billion era should be added. And then this one was taken back to the executive because they are the ones who are going to work on the revenue generation. And then there was an agreement that yes, they deserved it, then let us go ahead with it. After that one, so when all this were going on, my brother, the senator, Senator Nigi, was even a member of the appropriation committee. All those things we did and we passed. And that was in the public glare. And then the, even the signing of cer the signing ceremony was in public glare. After that one, the budget 
was supposed to start performing. Okay. When our brother came up, and the mistake, maybe it is a mistake, maybe it was a de deliberate uh, way of woodworking the, uh, the uh, suspecting uh, public, was that there were statutory transfers. Especially, and exactly the amount that our brother was saying was the party, uh, was the party amount was the amount that was supposed to go to the statutory uh, for statutory transfers. And these statutory transfers are the money due for first line charge uh, agencies of government like INEC, National Assembly, that of the judiciary, personal commission, UBEC, and so on and so forth. Right, About I, 12 I, I, of I'll them like that. I'll come back to you because, so, be, be, because so. uh, uh, sorry to cut you there, I'll come back to you because we need to bring Sheo in. Uh, uh, we've listened to you. We also had uh, Ningi here yesterday who also categorically said uh, he was misrepresented, not misquoted. And he also mm -hmm. disagreed that uh, well, there was actually padding. And what we'll come back, we'll speak more about the uh, uh, translation of that conversation he had with the BBC. Sean, good to see you again. Well, uh, in about uh, five, uh, like five hours ago, you actually tweeted on X and you categorically used the word uh, padding and you say uh, budget is monitoring situation in the National Assembly. Help make sense of what uh, budget so far has been able to uncover before you get to that uh, final conclusion, Sheon. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, we have been in, uh, observing the statements by Senator Abdul Ningi um, about the budget, and I think he made several statements or several statements were attributed to him. Um, I feel that some were right, uh, but some were also wrong. Um, on the issue that a section of the budget was the details are not available to the public or did not see some of the details of some of the budget items, I think that's factual. Um, some of the statutory transfers and the government-owned enterprises, them have amounted down to 3.7 trillion naira, as is mentioned, and not detailed, and the, the, the details are not available to the public, like how much is given to the National Judicial uh, Council, how much is given to INEC, how much is given to NDDC. There is no detailed breakdown to what those funds will be used for. It's also not unusual. This is part of the problems with the budget over the years. So I don't think if there is a conversation around padding, I don't think that's where it's supposed to come from. Um, so that some items in the budget don't have details factual. Um, that the government is running two parallel budgets and there is a three trillion naira gap, I don't think that's factual because um, the budget that was signed into law was 28.77 trillion naira, and that's the budget we know. Uh, we've combed that budget, we've looked at it, we've seen the breakdown, and so that's the budget that stands. So um, we, from our own angle, don't see any budget that's uh, different. There's a, just some understanding that's uh, coming to the budget right now. We run a budget in, in two frames. We have the budget of the MDAs, and we have the budget of the GOEs. The MDAs are the ministries, departments, and agencies. We have the government of the government of enterprises. It's brought together, and you also have to add statutory transfers to that. If you don't add up the entire framework, you might not get the actual total. And I guess maybe that's where things get maybe confusing for Senator Abdunongi. On the issue, there are, there are wider issues beyond that. And the, the bigger issue here is the insertion of items in the budget indiscriminately by the National Assembly. And I think um, a lot of people might have soaked that situation in for over the months. But the revelation by Senator Abdul Ningi has brought that forward. The budget of 27.5 trillion was presented by the president. The budget of 28.77 trillion was passed. So if you do the mathematics, it's around 1.27 trillion. That's the difference. But that's not the full picture. The National Assembly reduced the budget for the GOEs from 1.95 trillion to 1.05 trillion. So they had an extra 900 billion. So the total amount of projects that were added or inserted into the budget was around 2.2 trillion naira. And if you look at 2.2 trillion projects, they are from the, from the ridiculous to the frivolous, to the unreasonable. A whole lot of those projects are also kept in agencies that do not have the mandate, the technical capabilities to either oversee the implementation of that project or to appraise the completion of such projects. And that is the situation that we have right now. And the 2.2 trillion naira that we are talking here, we have the facts in there. 
it's not distributed evenly across the LDA agencies. And as you can hear, some senators got 500 million. Some senators where their allocation to their own constituencies are in billions. And this is what we're saying. Previously, the National Assembly had an 100 billion Naira fund for constituency projects. It was within that bracket that National Assembly members were able to nominate projects for their constituencies. Now, what we have seen since the ninth National Assembly is that that cycle has been broken. We now have National Assembly trying to compete with local government chairman and state government in doing projects within their local constituency. And they have left the 100 billion naira that has been allocated to them, or they usually allocate to themselves, and now moved into the mainstream. But let's take an example here. And I'm happy you have a senator there. The Agriculture Ministry had a budget, a capital budget presented to it of 332 billion naira. That capital budget of agriculture came back as 993 billion naira. So almost 660 billion was added to the capital projects for agricultural budget. And you might think this would be large scale agricultural project, maybe around tractors, farmers. No, these are mainly constituency projects. Maybe because the current minister of agri is a former senator of the National Assembly. Maybe that's why. And you have agencies like the Federal Cooperative College or G. You have agencies like the National Agricultural Mechanization Institute in Lauren. You have agencies like the National Productivity Center. And that has now become a conduit for National Assembly to indiscriminately put items. So you now have um, traditional rulers empowerment. You now have an Anglican church or you now have different items yeah. put into the budget. And we're asking, is this the budget that will guarantee us development? Is this the government that will take us to where we want to be? And these are the issues. If we want to get development, it is based on systematic planning. What we have got now is that, there's an, in my own view, is an executive overreaching the budget process. And this is, the, I think, is the substance of what maybe Senator Abduningi was saying. But on this fact that okay. there's a parallel budget, I don't agree with that. On the idea that there are several items in the budget that do not have breakdowns, and up to over 3 trillion naira, I agree to some part of that. But All the right, real yeah, sure, issue let, is that let, the let National me jump in. Yeah, members you, you, are having different uh, identity Sharon, you've, uh, you've met your points and you've been able to establish that there are some facts and there are some falsehoods. And you spoke categorically about the two kinds of budgets, uh, which I want uh, uh, Senator Daramodo to make clarification here, uh, listening to him speak about the MDAs and the GOE, specifically the 2.2 trillion naira. And she also said, oh, well, well, if Ning is right on some of these things, saying that they were shrouded, you know, taken away from public view, uh, they were in the dark side to the extent that people didn't know that these were actually, uh, you know, budgeted for and moved to such a GOEs, how then do you explain uh, what the Senate has done to uh, the distinguished uh, Senator Ningi for speaking some of these that budget and many Nigerians have termed the truth? Oh, thank you very much. Oh, and uh, thank you to my, uh, I give thanks to my brother, Shim. Yes, he said, he confirmed that there's only one budget, 20.77 trillion. Then the issue of statutory transfers that he mentioned, that the details were not given. Like when I was coming inside now, that uh, FCT budget, we were talking about it from the House of Representatives. They presented their own budget. Their budget was part of it. And they will later come back to now defend their budgets and now give details. That is the same way all other agencies, all other defense line charge. We now give their own, like NDDC. NDDC will get their own, then they will not specify all the details in the general, in the summary of the, of the general budget of Nigeria. Now they will now come back to the NDDC committee and then to the National Assembly to now defend their budget and then they will now give details. That is where their own details come, come in. So there is very, very break, a great difference between those statutory transfer corporations and then uh, agencies from the normal MDAs. So that is why you will not, in the document of that budget booklet, you will not, you will not see the details of these uh, agencies there. So that is about that one. Then about the issue of conservative projects. There is no senator, no House of Representative member that goes outside what was provided for them as 
uh, as a constituency project funds. And then the constituency project funds are not given to senators or House of Representatives members directly. You know, then so it is the MDS. No, you know, we might not be no, having me, problems no, if we. You let, don't, let's, let's, I, let's, I'll let you land. I'll let, let you land. I want okay. to throw this in so okay, that you can okay, put okay. this in perspective because uh, we're almost winding down before we get yes. to show. Yes. Don't you think that the envelope system is causing a lot of controversies? Uh, shouldn't the Senate be thinking of moving to the zero based budgeting system as against uh, the envelope system? When we tell what is happening now, it means that there's going to be a shift and then there's going to be a concentration for other a system of budgeting in Nigeria. But going to what my brother said, look, there is no senator, especially senator, that takes, that gets 500 million naira for conservative projects. The conservative projects, you will only nominate. Then the MDS will go and carry out. And one thing is this, if in my senatorial district, you see any project there, unless if it is written as consultancy project, he is monetary budget. Let him go there and he will see the ERGP of every uh, budget item. Then the one that is ZIP, which is the concerning, the zona intervention project. That is what they call the consultancy project. That one is the one that is nominated by senators or representative members. So the other ones, when they make budgets in Nigeria, towns, villages, cities, and states must be where the budget will go. So definitely, if the federal government road is in my senatorial district and they want to build the road, does it mean that the money that they are going to use in building the road belongs to me? Does it mean that that is my constituency project? No, it doesn't. That is not how it is. If there's a, if there's a federal government institution in my constituency, then, and then government has now voted maybe about 300 million naira there. Does it mean that I'm the one who has voted it? No. And you cannot just calculate that one as money that is going to my own constituency. So that is federal government project. The only project that belongs to us, which we are constitutionally allowed to nominate, is the ZIP, which we call constituency project. And then my brother, uh, Shemu, can now go to the budget and look at it. The one that is ZIP, that one will not carry ERGP as budget title. So those are the ones that lawmakers do nominate. Then any other one yeah. can now, is the prerogative of, of the executive, is the prerogative of the MDAs. And moreover, during budget presentation and defense, it is done in the public. I even expect anybody, anyone, to be there because they don't get they don't get keep we don't well, get keep well, so anybody comes still, around still then the, you can the, ask the, questions yeah and, and that's what Sharon's saying still some things were actually okay. not in the public that's the whole issue so let's bring in show and uh, <laughs> show our closing moment <laughs> with you uh you know some of these things are not in the public as highlighted by budget and again uh, i also asked him if we should now start moving away from the envelope system to the zero budgeting system, perhaps uh, will that help in, you know, taking care of many of these uh, perennial controversies? I, I already mentioned that I want to correct a misconception. Say the constituency project, we know that those are the ZIP, the Zona Intervention Project. And in the 6th, 7th, we've been doing budget since 2011. So we know this trend. In 6, 7, 8, National Assembly, even up to some side of 8, the, the National Assembly members stuck with the constituency project, the ZIPs. Now, in the ninth National Assembly, National Assembly has gone beyond that and looking into MDA's budget and indiscriminately in certain items into the budget. And even senators on the floor because said about it, the majority that mentioned that they want to do balls. There are over 700 balls in the, in the budget, that were, in the new items that were added in the National Assembly. There are over 1,000 street lights. I mean, what's, I mean, are you saying that those projects are federal government routes, the federal government project in this country? No. A street light, a borehole, is not a federal government project. It's a local government project. And it's rather better we understand that let people who are responsible for certain uh, issues, let them, let them take responsibility. States are getting more allocation. And that's what the National Assembly members focus on doing lawmaking because it's what makes somebody doing too much in his own constituency, maybe because the ranking member of the Senate. Another person is a, is a, is a young lawmaker. And something that, that young lawmaker now looks as if he is not performing because he's not doing empowerment, because he doesn't get the kind of allocation. The other point that I want to make about the envelope system it's not that's not the problem in my own view. Um, 
it, if we do zero based budget or program based budget or, or envelope based budget, we are not changing the dynamic. The dynamic is that the executive should moderate his use of appropriation powers. It's as simple as ABC. We want a country where federal government budget is tied to our mainstream towards proper development. This is the same thing the Buari government did. Spread, spread all its old seeds around. I have a small bread, and you, you, have, you have a small butter on a the, on the big loaf of bread, and then you are spreading it all around. How does it sound edible for eating? The same problem we have had. We do too many projects. How can you add 7,447 projects into the budget? And we are exact, and not even in the right agencies that have the mandate to do them. What is it? I know, I know a, we have a, to go. It's so college, I apologize. You know, I, I really, I, we, 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 of an all right, so, so we, 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 we need to go. But before we do that, I'd like uh, uh, Darren Modu to uh, react to what you've just raised. Uh, that's what many Nigerians are talking about, that you have hijacked the grassroots governance. We have seen uh, senators going into the zonal intervention projects that are not meant for or uh, such a budget system to the extent that uh, the local councils have been eroded because you have taken the jobs of the councils. Uh, Senator Adaramod, if we can do this in 40 seconds, please. Now, sorry, uh, let me tell you something. When we talk about Zen Zona Intervention Project, it has been on for a very long time. And why is it like that is that every <coughs> community and every lawmaker and whoever, that means you can facilitate a kind of program or a kind of project to your constituency. And there's nothing wrong about that because it is not the lawmaker that is going to have the money. It's not the one that is going to execute it. It's going to be, they, you will only fill a form telling them this is what your community needs. Because when they make budget in Abuja, do they know what they need in Elawekiti? Do they know what they need in Ogotwekiti? So how is my own constituency going to feel the impact of a federal government that is making budget. So that's why they now, we now have to, and it is part of the budget of the federal government, and that money does not go to any legislator, and okay. the legislator does not go to execute it. I, I, I give you 40 seconds. You've taken, you've taken more than 60 seconds. So, so I think because we'll have, of that, this, we'll have this conversation look at, again. And, uh, I really hate to stop and, you here. And, 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 not, and not only that, yeah, we, Modu, we have to Senate compliment. spokesperson, <laughs> and of course, uh, Shimon Igbinde, who is the co-founder and CEO of Budget uh, Civic Group. Gentlemen, you've made uh, the news night uh, more illuminating for many Nigerians who stay on this matter. I'd like to thank you for your time both. Thank you.